Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Channel 781 candidate interview. I am here with Waltham City Council at large candidate Emily Sapiria. Hello. Hi, Emily. Thank you very much for being here. So if you've been watching Channel 781 for a while, you know Emily. She was a regular on our debrief show, and she's helped with our special reports, including one of the first videos we ever posted. And before that, actually, she helped me with Pose for Grouches of Waltham because she is one of the few people in town who follows the city council really closely and has been for several years. So she always has really good up-to-date information on the issues. And now she is moving on to the next phase of her journey, which is running to be a member of the city council. So I'm very excited about that. So we are friends, but uh, I don't want to appear to play favorites. Favorites, so I'm going to ask you approximately the same questions I'm asking everyone else, starting with you're a first time candidate. There's 13 candidates for six seats. Six of them are incumbents. Do you really think you can win? And if so, why? I do think I can win. And the reason why is because every time I speak to someone at their door, when I meet them, we have great conversations. And in general, most of us here in Waltham agree that we have real, what I call life and limb issues that we need to address where it comes to just keeping food on the table, keeping roofs over our heads, and whether it's the person that I talk to directly, the neighbor that I speak to, or someone in their family, someone they know, everyone is concerned about these issues. And that's what I've been focused on. So the most difficult part that I found about campaigning is just reaching enough people. Uh, so as long as we can keep knocking enough doors, then I do strongly believe that we can earn one of those six seats. That's great. Thank you. So you you mentioned you said life and limb issues. So uh, for people who are just getting introduced to you and trying to decide how to vote, can you give us your top three priorities or your top three issues that are motivating you to run? Yeah. So when I talk about life and limb issues, I'm really talking about things that fall under housing, health, and infrastructure. So just talking about these real basics, keeping a roof over our heads, whether you're a renter like I am, or whether you own a home, even if you're unhoused, we have a, a lot of unhoused people in Waltham, and they're part of this community. But we we are obligated to care for all of our neighbors. When it comes to health, it's gotten harder and harder over the past few years to access health care. I myself rely on Mass Health for health care. I'm a patient at Charles River Community Health, and it is a really important system for people who, for any number of reasons, need to access that health care. But again, the services have gotten harder to access. And my friends who are on private insurance it's also gotten harder to access services. So I'm really concerned that we need to step up uh, the support we provide as a city so that people can live their healthiest lives. When it comes to infrastructure, everybody's talking about roads. Almost everybody I talk to looks out their door and says, these roads need to be fixed, whether it's a private way, a public way. And they're saying, you know, we don't get communications from the city. So communication and planning go hand in hand with all of these issues. And I'm I'm very concerned that we haven't had a planning department and that though there is a job posting for a city planner right now, there's not a robust plan for planning, which is a first place we need to start. To go back, just to follow up on, on health, access to health care is an issue we're used to hearing discussed at the state level or maybe the federal level. What does that mean specifically for the city? What could the city be doing to help in that area? Well, in general, and this goes back to planning, there's a lot of opportunities that the city has, you know, for starters to access grants and that that could reach into the arena of healthcare. But we can also work better and stronger with our community partners. And that could be Healthy Waltham, which is our wonderful health, wellness and food security organization that's through the pandemic, fed so many families and provided information and really was a lifeline to so many families. And currently, they've just received a new home. But 
we can do a better job supporting organizations like them when it comes to organizations like Waltham Fields Community Farm, where I volunteer as a work share. We've made it more difficult, not easier, for them to provide nutritious, healthy food to our community and beyond. When it comes to Charles River Community Health, again, we can create stronger partnerships with organizations like them. We don't have to do the lift of this work on our own as a city. And I think it is so ingrained in all of us, this independent spirit, which is really instilled in us as Americans. And that's to some degree great, but it doesn't always work out. We have these awesome partners and I believe strongly that we should work together as a community instead of struggling so hard to work individually. And as the city councilor at large, that's really what that role is about. It's about co collaboration and working together. You mentioned the farm, which I know is an issue you've watched closely because you're also a volunteer there. We're talking about Waltham Fields Community Farm, which is the nonprofit that operates the farm at the former UMass Field Station site in North Waltham, which is now owned by the city. And in order for that organization to stay there, they needed a lease from the city, which means they needed to go through an RFP process. Pretty much everyone involved says that they support the farm. So to get a little more specific for people who might not know, why is that controversial? Why is that a campaign issue? Can you talk about what's happened with the farm recently and what you would have done differently if it were up to you? Well, I think there's little controversy around the idea of supporting the farm or a farm. I think um, few people are going to be against a farm we all need to eat. It's lovely. It's good for tourism. However, in practice, the way it's rolled out is the city purchased the farm. As a resident, I'm very pleased about that. Uh, the alternative was that it would have been purchased by a third party and uh, any number of things could have been built on that land. However, my concern at the moment is that city council as a whole voted on in the affirmative on a lease that to me is crippling to the organization that is providing this nutrition to so many people, including myself. I am dependent on Waltham Fields Community Farm for my vegetables. The lease as it stands puts the, the burden on the on Waltham Fields Community Farm to upkeep the administrative building, which is crumbling. And I know this because I've worked there on the field crew. Uh, technically, it's called a uh, weed crew. I, you know, spent a summer just weeding in the fields there. I've worked as a volunteer. You know, I've worked distributing CSA shares to vegetables. And every time I go into that barn to use the restroom, wash my hands, anything else, I see the ceiling is coming down. The paint in the bathrooms is coming down. I've seen technicians come in in hazmat suits to remedy asbestos. And I'm so glad that they remedied it. But I certainly still have concerns. And so for now, the city who has purchased this building to then uh, put the burden of responsibility, that financial responsibility on the nonprofit, where agriculture, the financial margins are already so incredibly slim, it is just about crippling and puts the organization in a position where I won't speak because I haven't, I haven't seen their plans, but just in my experience, understanding how narrow agriculture margins can be, it could make things very difficult for operations. Thank you. So we you, we talked about the farm. I talked about Channel 781, and I know you were uh, helped organizing with Pride this year. Can you talk a little bit more about your work in the Waltham community so far and uh, what you're most proud of? Yeah, so I started off just by, you know, attending early on um, progressive Waltham meetings. And then I, I enjoyed starting to learn more about city council and attend meetings that concerned those niche issues that I was interested in, like the farm before the city had purchased it. And that sort of led to attending as many meetings as I could in person or remotely as the pandemic set in. Then as, you know, we 
all became sort of fascinated what, with what was going on nationally. I started to organize rallies to improve transparency, for example. When we were out asking for the Mueller report to come out, I organized a rally to, which was, you know, we had multiple rallies nationally for, and organized uh, people to come and, you know, just have our local ask uh, for national transparency. And that transparency is important on the local level as well. And of course, as you know, I've had the opportunity to be involved in covering local issues here um, in Groches of Waltham and with Waltham Data, Channel 781 News lately. And that has been an amazing opportunity to dig a little bit deeper. So it's just been an amazing evolution of getting more deeply involved. And I just sort of felt that at some point I could only be so effective sitting in the audience. So I ho I'm hoping that voters can at least get a chance to see if they they think my perspective and my experience would, would help the city out, would help their family out and maybe give me a chance, give my fresh perspective a chance. That's great. Thank you. So you've talked about what's important to you. What are the barriers? If you get the job, what are going to be the biggest barriers that you foresee in terms of making the kinds of changes you want to make? I think some of the biggest challenges are going to be certainly what I've seen in city council. One of the biggest ones is going to be Working with a group is always hard, especially when we have such a diverse bounty of thought here in Waltham. It's also one of our strengths. I'm hoping that being a bit of what I would call a mashup myself will facilitate that process. I sort of come from a mixed up background myself where I got to know a lot of different people. The other one is that I do have my own health challenges. I manage a chronic illness called endometriosis. And on a cyclical basis, it it knocks me down. I, I do have a great deal of pain cyclically. But like the Chumba Wumba song, I always get back up again. I'm a millennial. Not everyone will get that reference. But it's also given me such great perspective into what it's like to live with a debilitating condition. I feel fortunate that my condition allows me enough time that I can be a participant, a contributor, be productive enough of the time, while also having a deeper understanding of navigating the healthcare system and working as a participant in the community, but with some challenges. Thank you. I really appreciate that you talk about your chronic illness publicly, and you you brought it up in city council, I believe, at one point, I remember. And I appreciate that because I found that when you try to talk about issues affecting people with disabilities or chronic illnesses in Waltham, oftentimes people react like it's a hypothetical issue. Like they don't know whether there's actually any people who want to be involved who are affected by this. And in fact, there are a lot of people right now with chronic illnesses or disabilities, and a lot of them aren't talking about it. So it makes it appear they're not comfortable talking about it for lots of different reasons, but it makes it appear like it's a hypothetical issue when it's not. So since you are open about this, what do you think specifically the city could be doing to make it more feasible? for people with disabilities or chronic illnesses to participate in the government? There's some really simple adjustments that can be made. During COVID, uh, the city, of course, went remote, as many municipalities did with the city council meetings, and they started facilitating the city council meetings over Zoom. Um, now, some of our neighboring municipalities are still allowing that as an option. I believe strongly that that should still be an accommodation that is available to anyone who wants or needs it. It's, you know, a reasonable accommodation that could be provided very easily. And the technology now is very easy to use and would provide a great deal of benefit to those who need that accommodation. So I think that's the type of very easy accommodation that we could provide. There's, you know, additional very, very easy measures, things like adding subtitles to the city council meetings um, for 
you know, those that need that benefit. So there's a lot of really simple ideas that don't cost much money, if any additional money that we could be employing. Uh, and, And it just really all it takes is recognizing that it would provide a benefit to the entire community by allowing people who have skills to offer to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So if you like what you've heard from Emily, she will be on the ballot for the preliminary election on September 12th, and hopefully will also be on the ballot for the final election in November. So if you'd like to support her, plan ahead to vote in both of those. Thank you very much for being here, Emily. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. Take care.